Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. This video is one you've been waiting for. I tested all these manifolds yesterday. Now I'm going to warn you about this video. If you're wanting the most in-depth, detailed description of what every one of these manifolds is, this isn't it. I'm going to make separate videos doing three at a time and it, showing the dyno sheets and everything else. However, because that's going to take a little bit of time to edit, those are coming out later. But I know some of you are like, I just want to know the results. Can you tell me the results? Yes, I can. So that's what this video is. I'm going to tell you the results on how each one of these did. And by the way, they're in order from best, which is actually the best one's not actually here on the ground. It's still on the engine, um, to the worst, which is all the way, way down there at the end. We tested 12. Um, this was done at Gary Dunsworth's, um, Dunsworth's Machine Shop in Enid. He helped me through this the whole entire process. And I have to say, we really probably could have squeezed in two, two to three more. And let me tell you, it took us about 20 minutes to switch to a different intake manifold, which is moving. So that was, uh, we were doing pretty good as far as time. Some of these, four of them, we tested also with a two barrel. So besides just using a four barrel, we also used a two barrel um, carburetor to see what the differences might be. So that was neat. The hardest thing I would say for us was we were at the end, we were changing the manifold so fast that the oil temperature was actually getting warmer. So it was actually, we had to pause, wait for the oil temperature to come down. So that we get the water temperature and oil temperature at the same points for each test, because that's a big deal. Because we, you know, if you're comparing, some of these are really going to be close. So you want to make sure your temperatures are as far as oil and water are as close as you can get them so that your test isn't, the manifold isn't looking better because the water temperature or oil temperature was different. So that was a huge undertaking. Now, I'm gonna, before I actually talk about these, I do want to say this because I've always, you guys might have seen these manifold comparisons in magazines and some of you question it because you're like, hey, you know, a magazine's not going to make the manifold look bad that gives them all this advertising money. And I kind of see that. So I want to be up front and I'm going to tell you this. Most of these manifolds were our customers um, in some way, but not all. So let me, and I want to be up front and honest with you on all of this. So if we look at this, this first one is a Hurricane. That was donated by a customer who said, do what you want, let's see what it does. That's a version one. This is a Hurricane, it's version three, that was also just donated by a customer. This is a Brodix BM1000. That's one I have to port for a customer, but he said, go ahead and use the stock. So Brodix did not give me this. This is, I bought one to use for a customer, so I just have to port that. This next one's an Elderbrock 2892. It's the same situation. A customer bought this from me for me to port. So he said, you have to go ahead and run it stock. Now this is not. AFR donated the heads and two intake manifolds. So I wanna be upfront. I don't wanna think I'm trying to pull the wool over your eyes. They did give me this manifold. I wanna be upfront about that, totally clear. They gave me, this is the 4811. This next one's a Elderbrock Super Victor 2925. That was also, I have to port for a customer, so it's here. So uh, that one's that way. This is a Trick Flow R manifold. I actually personally, out of my own money, bought that. And the reason why I bought it, because I wanted to see what it would do. This one is another one that was donated by Tony. He's a customer of mine. This is an Elderbrock Performer RPM. He donated, said, here, you can keep it, use it, whatever. This is a Holly 30110. It's the same situation as most of the other. The customer asked me to port this, so that's the reason why that one's here. This is an AFR 4812. AFR donated this manifold. So I want to be up front. Don't want to hide anything from you. They did that. This is a Torque Link manifold. A customer abandoned this like more than 10 years ago, so hence I have that. No, I'm not selling it because it's not mine to sell in case he ever decides to get back in touch with me. That's the rundown for this. Now, the ending the combination, for you're not familiar, you really should go back, back and watch the previous videos. You should. I can sell you any piece of the engine that these are on. So what the engine was, I got a block. It's a Dart SHP Pro um, block from Bob's Machine Shop in Holbert, Oklahoma. Someone had blown it up and he put a sleeve in it. He half filled it with um, concrete and it worked fine. That's that. This, the rotating assembly came from SCAT. It's got a SCAT 4340 crank. Um, it's got SCAT uh, I-beam rods with ARP 2000 cap screws, 716s of course, and Racetech flat top pistons. That's common. The cam was donated by Urson, and I talked to Urson. If you want to buy the camshaft that ran in this engine, because in later videos you get to see the entire dyno sheet, um, you call Russ Yoder at Urson. He'll sell you the exact camshaft. 
So they might be tweaked just a little bit because I ran a 904 lifter and you might be running an 842, but um, the exact camshaft. Or you could buy it from me, I'd be happy to sell you one too. It's nothing special. The cam is a 260 duration on intake, 270 on exhaust, 680 lift, solid roller, uh, 108 lobe separation. The intakes are all these. The carburetors that were used um, for a two barrel was the one that Gary Dunsworth had. He uses it for his dyno all the time. It had an adapter spacer on it. Um, and I think it's like 500 CFM, it's a spec legal deal. It's nothing fancy. Um, the four barrel is the, my carburetor. It's a thousand CFM demon that was redone by Mark Whitener. Um, it's got annular boost, a really nice carburetor. We did not change any jets to this entire thing. And somebody like, you didn't do it right. The air fuel ratios were so close. I mean, that's one thing people can knock carburetors all you want. And I have to say this switching from all these manifolds that AFR did not vary more than three tenths period. So try that with the fuel injection. Um, the air, the carburetor is really good about self-learning because if the air goes through, it pulls the same amount of fuel. It's really smart that way. Um, same with the two barrel, which is pretty phenomenal. But anyway, that's it. Um, let's get to the results. There's the one that's the best is not here because it's on the engine, but it looks similar to this, this first one, but it has the dividers like the second one. It's the one I bought from auction. You can go back and watch my previous videos. It is the worst port match I think I've seen. It looked horrible. And we were joking, like, watch this be the best one. It was the last one we did of the day. And yeah, it was. So I'm going to give you the results. Now, by the way, these are peaks. So bear with me as I keep flipping back and forth on my notes here. And of course, I sprinkled the paper. My apologies on that. Here we go. Let's see. It's not here, but it was... It made 568 horsepower and 500 and... Uh, let's see, make sure I'm doing it right here. 532 foot-pounds of torque. That was the best one. This is the second best. It actually starts here. So this is uh, the Hurricane version. I'm going to just get my paper here. Sorry. There's 43 tests we did, so I'm going to keep flipping back and forth. Oh, I should point this out. I forgot that too. All the tests were done with the spacer. So if it was a um, uh, single plane, they were all done with the tapered four hole from AFR because that's what we'd used on the AFR intake, which was our first one done. By the way, that's the cheapest tapered four hole you can find. When I do the videos on the three, the first three, which will be the, uh, this one, this one, and the Brodix, uh, you'll get to see it. it. It's the best one, period, I've, I've seen. And I'm not, for the cost, nice too. Um, I did use that same spacer on this AFR dual plane and the torque link. I uh, could not use it on this one. I was going to. But that divider, because it's not cut down, it actually hits that center part. So I used it for uh, just a one inch open. And they're all one inch spacer, by the way. So now let's get to this one. This is a Hurricane version one. This is second place. It did a 566 horsepower, 533 torque. And several of you are going to ask, what about the averages? Watch the later videos because I'm going to edit them to make them better so that you can actually um, see how much better because some are than others especially on the two barrel they are very close but the averages are not even near all right i gotta flip a page so bear with me this is the hurricane version three uh you might say what are these plugs here i tried it with tubes and without tubes it made 562 528 on torque now i can stick with it okay next one was the brodix bm1000 it made 560, 529. So next one, the Elderbrock 2892, it was next. 556, 521. The AFR, I don't have it here written down. I should have, it's on my sheet, but it did, I think 530 torque and 551 horsepower, 552 horsepower. The Trick Flow R, it did 551, 520. So it was close to the AFR, but not really. You'd see on the averages. Um, sorry, I skipped one. This is the Elderbrock 20, 2925. So sorry about that. Messed up here. There's too much notes. There it did. That one did 552, 523. So peak horsepower was really close to this one, but torque wasn't. Um, this one I just said, but I'll repeat it again. The trick flow did 551, 520. The next best one was actually the dual plane, not the other single plane. It was the Performer RPM with the one inch open, 548, 524. 
the Holly 300 110. It did 541 509 torque. Then for the AFR dual plane, 532 horsepower, 518 torque. So yeah, it still made more torque than that one right there. So this one, more torque than that. And our torque length, the one you thought, and I thought too, this was gonna, this should be a stout one coming in. It was, I'll go ahead and tell you, nowhere on the curve did it be any of the others. And I mean nowhere, not at the beginning, not at the end, nowhere. It, it sucked. 527, 509 torque. Would you like, well, that's the same torque as that one. Uh, yeah, but it's still barely, there was nowhere else. You'll see when the curves come up. So, but anyway, that's the results. You all have them now. Um, they want to hold you back. I will, because I know several, I warned you, several of you are going to be disappointed in this video because I didn't have all the sheets and stuff. I want to edit it so you get it the proper amount so you can see it the way you want to have it seen. Now, this brings up one more thing. I'm making a book. All I did was I took, let me just show you real quick. This is the stack. These are dyno sheets. I'm making a book and I'm going to put these together because this is really hard to see on um, YouTube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a book. I'm going to go down to FedEx or somewhere, have them collate it and make a book. And I'm going to charge 10 bucks for what it, more than what it cost me. So if the, it cost me 15 bucks to make a book, I'm charging 25 plus shipping. So, um, and then you can use it because all the dyno data is here. Um, it, well, it's not all 43 tests because some of them are backups. We backed up every single one. Everyone got backed up. So the backup one's the one that I printed. So anyway, um, you'll get all that data. You'll get the measurements. I'm going to copy notes from my notebook for all the measurements for the manifolds, everything I have. And then there's none of my opinion in there. It's just, just facts. And you can peruse it at your own leisure. But anyway, if you want to do that, please email me at weingartnerracing at gmail.com so I'll know how many to print. It'll make things easier. Now, don't think, and I know, like I said, you're let down on this. You wish you could see the whole chart. You will. I really just want to get the editing done properly so it's not a turd of a video. Since I spent so much time dynoing, you deserve a good video. The first video is going to be three that are the same height. So the first video will be this AFR 4811. This Edelbrock 2925 and this Brodix BM1000. That's the first video. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you that's the first video series you'll see. The second video series you'll see, or the second video, is going to be this 2892, this TrickFlow R, and the Holly 30110 because they're all the same height and have a lot in common. The next video you'll see will be the dual planes, the Edelbrock Performer RPM, the AFR, and the torque link. The last one will be the hurricanes. There would be three, and you could see that video. And then the final thing I'll do, one more video, will be the other stuff we tried that I haven't mentioned, like these tubes. Also different carb sizes, different carb spacers as well, and that will be its own video. So yeah, I know you're like, man, I really wanted to know. Well, now you know how they did, but you don't know the details, so be patient with me on that. I'll get that to you. It's just going to take some time. I warn you, the next video you see is probably me, because I've already pre-recorded that one, was comparing different chamber sizes for cylinder heads from 55 to 72 cc. That one I will put out, and you'll get to see that probably next time. That gives me time to edit and make things happy. Anyway, i got to wash all these. And if you think I'm done intake manifold testing, you're incorrect. So if you're new to my channel, this is, this is not the end. This is the beginning. So some of these manifolds you may not get to see again, but we will, I will go back to the dyno and we will have made changes on manifolds to see what it does. The point for this dyno mule is not to find the one that makes the most power. It's to see what changes affect how they change power, not to see if it makes more power or less power. I mean, that's what it's actually for. It's not to see which one made the best power. I want to see, did this cause it to hurt power? Did it cause it to help power? What did one change do? So just to kind of explain, when I go back, let me show you what's will have been changed. Most likely on this one, I'm going to try um, to thin the dividers to make it similar to this. On this one, I'm probably going to add runner extensions and make the runners longer. 
this one may not be seen again because I have to fully port it because it's for a customer. So it may not get done to be on that dyno. So it may not. But if it does, it'll be fully ported and see what it does. Fully ported versus not. This one will be fully ported and that'll go back on the dyno. This one has a clover leaf. I'm just going to remove that and see what it does. This one will be fully ported. Don't know if I'll, um, if this will be coming back just because I might be done by then. So in other words, the customer might need it before I can get back on the dyno. This one will be just surface finish because I own that manifold. I'm going to try a burr finish, then I'm going to try a 60 grit and so on and so forth. I can even polished at one point. This one, I'm going to cut down that divider. That's all I'm going to do. This one is fully ported. I probably won't, this probably won't make the dyno again. It, it, one, it wasn't that great. Maybe, um, but I bet I have that out before I get done. This one, I really don't have any idea. I'm just going to try port it and see how good I can make that. That one I'm done with. I'm done with the torque link. So these will probably most likely go back and you get to see what each thing does. So, and I'll be trying different stuff. One of the things I'm going to do is put a turtle in. The one that's on the engine right now is the one with the bad port match and it'd be great to fix it to see if it actually makes power worse, but I just left it on there to keep the engine sealed. Anyway, longer video, even though I try to make it short. And this is the reason why there's only three going to be three manifolds in one video, because even at three, it's going to be, when you see all the data and stuff, it takes forever. So the video ends up super long and you'll be disappointed. But now you know how they stack up. By the way, it's testing on 91 octane with a splash of 110 just to keep things safe. That's, it's simple. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate you guys sticking around for all this. And really thanks to AFR for donating the heads and manifold. Um, Thanks for Urson for the cam, Dunsworth for the time, because without him, we worked, we worked like magic with changing these manifolds. It's quite phenomenal. You know how many gas, intake gaskets we went through? Two. That's quick. I mean, that's fine. Pretty nice, because here's something, sidebar. The way that they went so fast is because, yes, we put silicone on the ends, but it never had time to set up. So this, the silicone had was, we glued the intake gaskets to the heads, but we silicone the valley, not bringing it all the way up to the gasket because then it'll stick to the gasket and try ripping it off the head. We'd silicone the valley. We'd make, get the temperatures up, make usually two, three, sometimes four pulls in a manifold, go out there and start taking off. And by the way, burning the shit out of our hands, but we'd rip off the manifold. The silicone wasn't dry or set up or nothing. So it's easy to pull off the manifold without it tearing the gasket. There you go. Anyway, oh, you might say, well, what'd you do about timing? How'd you keep that from going away? Crank trigger saves your life when you're doing tests like this. The crank trigger is this magnet that's on the harmonic balancer, and that's what keeps your timing correct. All you have to do is put the distributor back in and make sure it's phased correctly, which is pretty simple. Just line it up with the, what you, where it should be, um, and you got it. You don't have to worry about setting timing each time. It's already set on the crank trigger. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm Superman. You guys take care.